Hey everybody, I'm Bobby. Welcome back to my channel. This is Bobby Reads. And boy, do I have a doozy for you guys today. Before we get started, I want to acknowledge the fan. If you see it, just ignore it. I live in Arizona and it's already a thousand degrees and I am dying. So get used to seeing this little guy in all my videos. Okay, so getting into it. So you guys know how we just had that amazing Aurora Borealis, right? Everybody was outside taking pictures, posting it on Facebook. It was like a whole big thing. Everybody was so stoked that they got to see the Northern Lights. A lot of people have that on their bucket list. They want to see the Northern Lights. And so there were people that were really excited because typically the um, Northern Lights or the Aurora Borealis, it's not visible um, past a certain uh, latitude. How many of you guys went out and like took pictures with the sky? I, my Facebook feed was full of it. Well, guess what? It was fake. It was all fake. Mm-hmm. I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, Bobby, you're crazy. I saw it with my own eyes. Like, what, what are you saying? It's fake. How could it be fake? Let me explain. There is an organization called H-A-A-R-P, HARP. HARP stands for High Frequency Active Oral Research Program. And this program is based out of the University of Alaska Fairbanks, okay? And in this organization, there are different people that are members or that participate. And those people are university physicists and engineers, government scientists, mm -hmm, government scientists, mm -hmm, um, and scientists from commercial firms having an interest in the ionosphere and in communication and radio science theory and applications. Okay, what what is that? We'll get into what that is in just a second. I also want to point out that there are several universities that have played a major role in this HARP program um, from its inception to present time. These universities include the University of Alaska, Stanford University, Penn State University, Boston College, Dartmouth, Cornell, University of Maryland, um, University of Massachusetts, MIT, University of California, Los Angeles, Clemson University, and the University of Tulsa. Okay, you guys, that's a lot of schools that are involved. And let's really look at this. So we have this program that has people that are from very reputable, respectable schools. We've got physicists, we've got engineers, we've got very smart people, right? And we also have the government taking an interest as well as civilian corporations, uh, civilian scientists taking an interest in the activities that these people are doing, the ionosphere and communication and radio science theory and applications. Okay, so one of the things that this HARP group does is they conduct these experiments. And one of the experiments that they conduct, um, as stated on their website, is to perform an experiment at will to create plasma structures and irregularities. Use the ionosphere like an antenna to excite low frequency waves, create weak, luminous, or aurora-like glows, and a variety of other experiments to create weak, luminous aurora like glows so this is a group that creates aurora borealis phenomenon in the sky using their ionosphere like an antenna so they're using the ionosphere to excite low frequency waves okay and frequency you know this is like tesla stuff we go back to frequency and it's always like frequency and energy i always say it so why am I mentioning this HARP group? Well, they have advertised on their website that they are conducting an experiment or they had a, they were conducting experiments. And it just so happens that they were conducting those very experiments on May 8th through May 10th, the same days as the supposed geomagnetic storm that we've all been hearing about. Once people started like digging into this though, HARP immediately released a statement basically denying all involvement in the Aurora Borealis. The quote that they have posted on their website is, the spectacular Aurora sparked questions about possible connections to recent experiments by the High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program or HARP. While HARP 
did operate a scientific campaign May 8th through May 10th, it had no connection to the solar storm, according to Jessica Matthews, HARP director. Okay, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's say, you know what? This was just a coincidence, right? Like, it's just a coincidence that these two things happened on the same time. Or maybe we could say, you know, maybe they knew that this geomagnetic storm was coming. And so they scheduled to do these experiments at that time. Like, okay, th that's viable, right? That would make sense. Well, no, um, because a court, again, according to their website, um, the May Harp campaign was scheduled about a month and a half before the geomagnetic storm. Or I think what they're trying to say is that, um, the knowledge that there was going to be a geomagnetic storm. The timing was purely coincidental. Geomagnetic storms are unpredictable with lead times before a solar event is detected from Earth measured in minutes, not months. So we can't use the argument, well, it maybe they did it on purpose because they're saying, no, they didn't do it on purpose, that they had no way of knowing that there was going to be a geomagnetic solar storm on the very same night that they were conducting an experiment that would result in aurora borealis, which is the same result you would get from a geomagnetic storm. Now, keep in mind, we've had geomagnetic storms before, but we've never been able to see the aurora borealis this far south. Why would this particular geomagnetic storm be so much stronger that we could see it for three consecutive days? So let's go back to my, maybe this is just a big coincidence theory, right? Like maybe this is just a big coincidence and, you know, uh, it just, it looks crazy, but you know, it's just, it's just a thing. It's just fine. It was just a coincidence. So I really wanted to do my due diligence for all of you, because I know that you rely on me to give you guys the facts and truth and, you know, not some mumbo jumbo. So I decided to dig deeper and I wanted to look at other dates when the HARP program or organization had also been doing testing and to see if there were any other Aurora Borealis events that happen simultaneously. On their website, they posted that they also conducted experiments on February 27th through March 2nd, 2024. And it just so happens, you guys, that NASA has posted photos on their website that they took on February 27th and February 28th under a headline titled, A Dazzling Aurora Borealis. And that is on the NASA website, which is a government run website. So the last time that this HARP organization did these experiments, there was also a significant enough of an event that NASA photographed it and then put it on their website and did an entire article about it. But they want us to believe that they're not involved. So one of the big reasons why I have my channel is because I feel like it's very important for people to understand that the information that they're being fed is mo more often than not inaccurate. It's biased and it's going to tell a certain story for a certain reason. And, and we know this. I mean, we know that like the CIA has disclosed that there has been campaigns as far as propaganda and, you know, in the media. And we're just kind of expected to hear these these stories and then just believe it and go along with it. And I don't think enough people actually stop and question what they're being told. And the reason I do these videos is because I don't mind digging and then doing the research and then sharing with you guys, like, this is what I found. This is what's out here. And it's just, it's very concerning to me that there would be something conducted, an experiment conducted that was so massive that people around the globe, the Northern Hemisphere, could see it. There's so much information that's not being shared with us and that we don't know. Now, I understand that there's some things that have to be kept secret um, in regards to like national security, but I think that there's a, I not, no, I don't think, I know that there is a lot more that is not shared with the public that we do have a right to know. And I think we should know if there's an organization that's conducting experiments that puts frequency into the air, are there any health? ramifications of that it's radio frequency is it safe i mean probably maybe i don't know but when you want to know like if there's something that's going into this the ionosphere and they're manipulating it i would like to know that it's safe 
you know? So I just, I saw this story and I thought it was crazy. Big shout out to Casper Sight. He actually did a video on this and I saw it and I was like, oh my gosh, I got to dig more. And so I did digging and I couldn't believe what I found. So I don't know, you guys, what do you think? What are your thoughts on this one? I, this one really surprised me. I guess I shouldn't ever be surprised when it comes to like, you know, the government lying. I mean, I should just expect that by now, but this one was a trip. This one was just, was a little crazy. So I want to know what you guys think. Do what do you think about this? Do you think it was just a coincidence and it was a geomagnetic storm? Or do you think that this was an artificially created Aurora Borealis? Please let me know in the comment section down below. Also, please be nice to one another and to me. Um, we're all people here with feelers. Uh, so I love conversations in the comment section. We're just going to be nice to one another. If you have not already subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? You guys, like less than 1% of the people who watch my videos are subscribed. So if you haven't subscribed, just do it already. Hit the subscribe button. Click the little notification bell so that you're notified whenever I upload new content. I want to thank you so much for hanging out with me and listening to me ramble about all of my nonsense. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.